All right, for the first time in a few weeks, we actually didn't drop on a Monday. Um, so it's a nice nice way to start off a week here uh, as we head out of March into April. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, what that means with what we were talking about on Friday with this idea of this crowded trade of retest the lows, retest the lows, retest the lows. Why right? You can play the drinking game on, on uh, financial media, and every time they mention retest the lows, you might not make it um, past lunch. Um, that's the idea. It's a very crowded expectation. Uh, so we talked about the idea that a lot of times they don't; those types of moves don't work out as we expect. Doesn't mean they won't work out. Just might not look like as we expect. So I'm going to break that down more today uh, and talk about some things that suggest we might have a couple more days light today. Small grinding moves to the upside, just grinding enough to kick people off this bandwagon. Uh, of course, we can also drop, and that's the high probability trade. So we're going to talk about, if we do, how to take advantage of that uh, with, with our trade idea of the day. So let's go ahead and get started. Today is Monday, March the 30th, 2020. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. All right, well, let's start off taking a look at the S&P 500 uh, with the market forecast indicator. Uh, kind of an interesting little candlestick pattern here. We didn't get up above Thursday's high, but you can see... Uh, we pretty much retraced Friday's drop uh, today. And again, we talked about this in Friday's video that you know there's a lot of the, the bandwagon for a retest of these lows is very, very crowded. And of course, you know it's the for, for good reason. And we've talked about it too. And we have expectations of us retesting these lows. You know, now with that little runaway gap, the question is how much of the lows. But the reality is we'll probably request we retest these lows, if not go lower uh, than 2200. Uh, down towards 2100 is an area we've talked about before. So that's the high probability, but it's a very crowded bandwagon. And, and as I mentioned before, bandwagons, when they get pretty crowded, um, they, the, those trades, those expected trades, don't tend to happen as we expect. Um, they eventually happen, but t potentially not the way we expect. Uh, so, you know, we got an update today. We still got the light green shading. Again, these light green shadings in between the dark purple, they don't last very long either. So we don't expect this one will last very long. Uh, but I imagine, um, again, you can see, like, look at all the dark pink. There's not very many, but you look at the dark pink, you can see the light green. There's a few. I mean, there, look at that move right there. That was a move that got us all the way up really pretty quickly. Now, granted, much bigger difference here. But got us up from relatively low levels at the time back to the 30-day moving average pretty quickly. Uh, still didn't. I mean, obviously we were so far, we were still far below it that we didn't get dark green shading, and and I don't know if we'd get dark green shading here. I mean, it looks like we got one day of dark green shading. Uh, we probably won't get that here. But I mean, if you look, I mean, even over here you had we had we had dropped pretty far below in early 2018. Again, relatively speaking, of course. And we made a run back up to the 30 with dark green shading too. Um, you know, I don't know necessarily if, if we're going to get dark green shading here. And if we do, it probably won't last very long. Um, but regardless whether it's dark green or light green, I mean, that was a pretty decent period there. Most of these periods um, where we're at, and even if you go again, like we have been doing, going back to the 2008 time frame to see what that looked like. Um, <clears throat> here's the October. So again, look, you know, some light green shadings here, and that one took a few days, and that was only one day, um, and then then that was a little bit longer over here, and then we finally got some dark green shading for a while. So if we have anything, if we look anything like this at all, then you know, here's a light green shading. This one might last a little bit longer. We might get to the 30-day uh, moving average, um, knock some people off that that retested the lowest bandwagon before we get the dark pink shading again. I fully expect us to get another layer. I mean, we got the red line still, so we're not, you know, dark green, dark green shading and green line is the bullish pattern. We're not anywhere near that. Uh, so, which means that since we have a red line, uh, typically your red line, when you're in a red line period, you typically alternate between light green and dark pink, which means um, the intermediate line, you know, rolls back over from below 50 and heads back towards 20. And we'll you know fully expect that to happen here. But you can see even on this dark pink shading uh, run that we've had, um, you know we're still I mean we're just a little over the 38% level of of the current run. So I mean this little near term it ends up being a near term pullback. We we haven't really we haven't even yet retraced 50% of that pullback. 
Uh, this one we did retrace right around close to 50%. Um, so you can kind of get an idea that, you know, that we can go up here. Um, you know, it, it seems like a really big gain, but the reality is we have to put it in context of the big drop uh, that we had previously. That was something that, that was tweeted out here. Um, I tweeted this out. Uh, about this idea of the markets become a tug of war between the bears bracing for a possible depression if we can't stop COVID and the bulls betting on an absolute boom if we don't be, if we do beat it and the reality is that's not the case like, it's not that binary we're, we're still down even with this little rally we've had we're still down 23 percent from those highs from the all-time high uh, that we had that's still in and of itself a pretty decent drawdown even with the bounce we had, that's not bulls betting on a boom. That's bulls betting on us not going into the depression because that's what you know. That's what was pricing in. I mean that that was a significant decline there, um, you know, from that low. And obviously we were down 35 percent in four weeks. Uh, so that's that's a that's like 1929 style pricing in depression. Um, and and so what the bulls are saying is, ah, we might not be that bad. Uh, it, it obviously we're not turning back around and getting all-time highs, but we might not be in 1929 here. Uh, it might end up being like 1987. 1987 retested these lows multiple times before we finally came out of it, even though we didn't go to lower lows. And, and there's still a pretty decent chance we can go lower uh, towards 2100. About a time all is said and done on this. Obviously, if you look at the different indexes, there's your Dow, looks very similar, ba just barely turned green. Uh, light green the nasdaq same thing just barely turn light green um and then of course the russell 2000 which you can see today barely turned green so this one's been lagging um behind and it still hasn't even crossed the 38 uh, percent threshold so you know there's i mean this as much as we've bounced uh the bounce has been pretty limited to the worst of the worst um that the worst of the drops and some, as you'll see later, in some some other safe haven areas, this really isn't the most bullish of bounces, which makes the retest likely. Just you know, again, beware of a move that the crowd is expecting, um, because the crowd uh, usually um, it take you know usually the, it doesn't happen the way the crowd expects it will. All right, before we look at some other charts, I invite you to, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mouse Over Our Logo, right here in the bottom right corner of your screen. Hit the red subscribe button that pops out. There's also one down below the video if you're watching us on YouTube. That will notify you when these videos are posted. Hit the thumbs up icon down there too. Uh, that tells me two things. Number one, you liked our video today. You, you got something out of it. Number two, you want us to do it again tomorrow. So it's a quick way to give us feedback that you want us to keep doing these videos. If you don't, you don't have to click on anything down there. Um, Join or also while you're down there, excuse me, comment. What what did you get out of our videos today? I love the comments here. The last uh, few weeks, there's been we've been getting a lot of comments on the videos. I really appreciate it. Uh, so keep commenting uh, on what you're getting out of these day by day. Uh, join our website at marketscholars.com. There's a link popping out right there in the top right corner of your screen. Click that link. It takes you to a page where you can subscribe to our site for free. Follow me on Twitter for more content between these videos from day to day, and join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. If you're watching us here on our website, I invite you to check out the other stuff that's around here. Uh, for example, these live videos we do at 3.30 Eastern Time on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Uh, we review all the old uh, Market Outlook trade ideas that I put on uh, in these videos. We manage all the trades that we're in. We close out some. We wait on others. We talk about why. We talk about the management process. Um, so uh, if that's something that interests you, then check that out. You, uh, our calendar is also right below that of our classes. You can click on view more or just click up here on trading room to see the rest of our calendar. Uh, we do teach eight trading rooms a week between Brandon and I. And then we also have, in addition to that, two Q&A sessions for our premium subscribers. But our monthly subscribers, you get access to these live videos as well as all eight of our trading rooms uh, week by week. So um, you can check that out here with this link right above the video and get more information. Uh, if you mouse, so if you click on, if you click on pricing, it will give you details and compare to the two different plans to see uh, which one you like. We also invite you to invite to in, to engage with us on social media. Click this heart; it opens up this window where you can like uh, today's market outlook tweet. Click that thumbs up. You do the same thing on Facebook. Again, when you engage with us on those platforms, they will promote our content to you. Um, if you don't engage with us, then you might see our stuff. You might not. 
um, because they always promote the content that you engage with the most out of all the accounts that you follow. So just to kind of make sure that you're seeing our stuff, we try to make it really easy for you to engage with it right here. And check this out. Now that we're back on the charts here, we have the makings of a reversal, like a reversal candlestick pattern. You know, something like these you can see right here. So, you know, you can see some examples over here as well. Now, granted, I, you know, are we going to get a big, long, you know, 13-week uh, run on the intermediate line? Probably not. If, if we do, it might just get us up to the 50, if not the 200-day moving average and roll us over. But, but the fact that we are getting one shows just how bullish this bounce has been. Um, you know, again, I'm going to venture to guess that we probably end up with a kind of this looking candle, which means by the end of the week, we're probably coming back down. The question is, before the end of the week, how much further do we go up um, and test some of these levels before uh, we come back down? That's the million dollar question, right? But from a weekly standpoint, that is a, you can see the PPO is still dropping pretty sharply, but that's a really good candlestick pattern uh, to get. Um, here on that. Just, I mean, again, to go back to 2008, um, you know, for for the comparison that we like to make, all right. So go back to 2008, and and you know, we'll go out to 2010 and look at a weekly chart here. You know, you can see, you know, here was the the, the worst of the selling was this week right there, and you can see how we never got to new lows. We ended up with a little bit of a candle, and then we, then we retested with some bearish, but that was a pretty decent bullish potentially reversal candlestick pattern before we rolled over and even there we got a, a bullish trend that got us up to the 50 before we rolled over so we might be getting something like this this week but don't bank too much on it being a reversal pattern you know hopefully it just suckers people into thinking we won't retest the lows before we get a you know an actual retest of a few weeks and then again you know when we if and when we do get the reversal don't expect it to get to the 50 or beyond um, or you know to, to really get us going with the golden cross again it might just get us to the 50 it might only get us to the 200 so you can see some of these reversals that one got only to the 50 this one only got to the 200 so you know watch watch those levels um, but I'm gonna venture to guess if we end up with a bullish candle this week it's gonna be more in depth it's gonna look more like that uh, where we you know we it's enough of a bullish candle to potentially get some people thinking hey V bottom and then all right, we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. Um, again, you know, the high probability expectation is that we retest those lows, but we just want to get some people off that bandwagon so we can do it in the way we expect it, right, without craziness to occur. Um, here's the three, you know, we got two green arrows. You can see the fall in volume. I mean, two, two straight days of below average volume is very, very good sign again uh, for the broader market. Uh, this is what I'll show you why here in a second, but let's take a look at the three line versions of this. You can see how even with the bullish move today, we're still sitting at that 17 day moving average. That's why we've been limited the last couple days and going up through towards. But you can see if we do hit 280 in the next day or two, um, we will get you know a pattern that I'll show you later today, which is a very bearish pattern where you get the light green shading, um, potentially dark green by then, but light green shading most likely with a yellow line. I mean, that's a pretty, and, and three green arrows most likely too. Um, and when falling volume, that will most likely be a pretty bearish pattern um, that we can sell at that point. But until then, you can see why we're stalling here. We're stalling right at that 17 day moving average. I mentioned how bullish that volume was. Again, you look at the, the volume uh, being below average at 171 million. Uh, the trading range today was also really small too. Look, nine points uh, with no gap there. That's significant. I mean, that the fact that we're dropping you know, nine points, that's, you know, that's around, you know, what, 2% would be five and a quarter points. So, um, you know, you're looking at, you know, you're, you're getting pretty darn close to 3%. Uh, the, the ATR, today's ATR of the current price, to kind of show you why that's significant is because, you know, as we get closer to 3%, you know, again, if I were to show you this 2008 time frame again and what happened uh, there, you know, we, we, we hit the peak of the selling and we retested as we peaked here. We retested after coming down a little bit. It wasn't until we got back down towards 2 3% that we finally started to slow down and, and go sideways. And even after the ultimate retest, and we are still flirting with the 2 3% level. Um, so that's, 
that's how far we had dropped and you can see the volume had dropped and leveled off at these I mean that was still a higher level relatively speaking but it had leveled out so almost like we're flattened the curve right on the volume um, but the ATR had dropped uh, the, the excuse me there's the ATR the ATR relative basis had dropped the uh, volume had flattened right we had peaked and then we had come up a little bit more but we were flattening there that all needs to happen before we really set a low point I mean these things need to really start dropping and they're starting to, but they've got some room to go, right? The ATR is still 14 and a half points. It's to get to three percent, you know, it's got to get down to what, you know, seven, five, you know, almost eight. Almost, it has to get all the way down to here to get just to the three percent mark. That means that that doesn't mean that we won't retest while it's doing that. It will retest. It will just retest a lot slower than it did over here when we were getting 14 point ranges you know, in 12 point ranges and 10 point ranges on the SPY. And the volume will be a lot less. I mean, it'll still be relatively high, but it'll be a lot less because we're getting, you know, 171 million today. That's going to start bringing this line down. And as these lines come down, you know, that's bullish. That means the 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 extent of the selling, right? We've, we're flattening the curve, uh, so to speak. We've had the surge and now we're flattening the curve and, and eventually for us to get out of this, it's got to, we've got to bring that flattened curve all the way down to these lower levels first. Then we can get going. Because again, you really don't get going on a good bullish trend until you get below one percent, and we're way far, you know, way far above that. So, um, you know, that's that's the kind of things you look for. The volume's got to get way, way back down to these lower levels for us to really say, okay, now we are uh, entrenched on this bullish trend. One thing, one reason we talked about on Friday for for a potential bounce today was volatility. It's still pretty elevated, not necessarily on an absolute basis, but on a relative basis, it was still very elevated. Well, you can see that elevation start coming down. There's still some room for it to come down towards 105 and 100 percent. Um, but that's why you know the market's not dropping today like it did every other Monday, and and why it might not drop tomorrow because volatility is still relatively elevated compared to the three month. Uh, VIX, the VX, the VIX three month. All right, so as that comes down, like it did over here, see, it's already done that over here when volatility was much higher. So as it comes down over here, then we start looking for that retest of that low point. At least that's when I would really start looking, uh, in particular, for the retest of those lows. So that might be another day or two uh, before that happens. So before we look at uh, what's driving the price action today, just to summarize our technical outlook uh, with these charts that we just looked at. Uh, we are, you know, the markets are still bouncing. It's still really low from where we peaked, um, but we're bouncing. There's still some room to bounce and maybe push some people off this crowded expect, expected trade, right? This retest. Uh, and then we retest these lows. So we see some technical signs that suggest that we might be a little bit more bullish, um, might, you know, might in the very, very short term uh, before, before things roll over and turn down. Um, you know, again, there's some signs that we might not retest all the lows um, and things are, you know, we're, we're getting like the fact that we're continuing to get bad news and the market doesn't drop. Again, bear markets don't end on good news they end on bad news that, the, that we don't respond to negatively. Um, so, you know, there's some signs like that. But again, high probability uh, that we eventually pull back. Um, so don't get suckered in. And some people will and some people might. Um, get suckered into this trade as we go up a little bit more to to try to knock off that crowd of trade But eventually, you know, we'll have an opportunity for some some bearish trades uh, To be able to take advantage of that retest as as we'll look at today here later in the video And as we have been looking at for the last uh, few market outlook videos that I've been doing So uh, what do you think do you agree with that assessment? Do you disagree? There's a link popping out right there in the top right corner of your screen click on that link It opens up a poll Hit either agree or disagree. If you click disagree, comment down below why. What are you seeing that suggests either you're a lot more bullish or you're a lot more bearish than I am? Um, obviously, I mean, a lot of people probably be a lot more bearish than this um, because that's what everybody's thinking right now. But but what are you looking at? What chart or indicators are you looking at uh, that suggests that maybe that crowded trade's right? Um, that we should just step in line. It's a long line, but step in line and, and get with the program here. Uh, you can share that down below in the comment section. All right, now let's talk about what's driving this price action. And one of the uh, myths that we talked about, or one of the ideas, was you know we've been rallying without crude oil, and that might be an, that might uh, be an impact. Um, I did want to bring up. Let's bring up this chart here really quickly um, of the four-week chart. 
the four week chart and then I want to bring up a comparison of the of crude oil with um, the futures and we're going to actually bring up um, we're going to change this to the futures uh, for the S&P 500 and then we're going to change the we're going to change and get rid of the volume profile there we go and then we're going to change this to the uh, crude oil contracts all right and let's go to 15 minutes so we can get it all on the same so and let's actually go back to right here so this is would be 322 uh, it was actually last Sunday night uh, so a week ago last Sunday night um, stocks had dropped uh, the crude oil had dropped right and and gap down um, stocks had dropped and gap down and we had rallied through um, especially by we kind of hit a low on Monday but then Tuesday you can see how stocks have been rallying ever since essentially going into today even after a little bit of a drop Friday into this morning uh, or the, when the futures open up on Sunday and then uh, the crude oil also gapped down and you can see crude oil actually gapped down last night below the level where it gapped down to last Sunday night and it stayed down so crude oil kind of did break we said you know one crude oil doesn't have to rally with stocks but at least has to start it has to hold its floor point its floor and as of right now it's not it didn't hold the floor we actually got down through the floor and now we're hitting our head up on the floor which is acting as a new a ceiling for us so when you consider that um, and you look at its market forecast for crude you know that's a pretty significant drop but you notice again smaller ranges we're not getting as big of a ranges we didn't even get a cluster today even though we had dropped below twenty dollars at one point uh, per barrel uh, obviously we're significantly down uh, the trend strength uh, for crude oil is significantly high or high uh, you can see down to minus twenty three I mean if you I mean this this harkens back to a few years ago um, <clears throat> right over here in 2014 um, that was real significant decline for crude oil in terms of a trend strength um, and we had you can see how far down it went before it bottomed out at forty four dollars but we were trading at over a hundred dollars before that trend happened here's another trend very similar to the type of move we're getting right now in terms of strength um, <clears throat> we ultimately hit this low point at 50 kind of the floor at that point we dropped through the floor very temporarily uh, down to about 43 and then we rallied off of that uh, not to a higher high to a lower high but and and to the pretty much the high point of the last few years and then uh, you can see so now the question is is 20 the floor uh, similar to what 50 was back here uh, similar to what we saw in some of these levels where we kind of hit a floor came down and then rallied off of it uh, here's the floor right here potentially uh, fell through kind of one last hurrah and then uh, rallied off for a retest so you know when you consider all those factors in play um, um, you know how you know, are we close to the floor are we going to kind of fake out break out suppose you know to the downside uh, before we rally back up that's you know that's kind of the expectation here uh, obviously the 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 long-term momentum on a PPO basis you know again you know harkens back to that 2014 level uh, it was one of the strongest right here one of the strongest declines that we saw, we saw in crude and from a PPO level uh, percentage now this this is a percentage gap not a price gap um, but we are as bearish now as we were then and that was pretty much we reached we made new lows but we you know that was a temporary low for that point of course in 2008 when the broader market as a whole was dropping we were coming off of much much higher levels at that point and we fell uh, pretty hard uh, this would be more like I would expect this drop to be more like this one because we weren't as bullish you know we never did have this such a strong bullish move before we fell so can we get to new lows potentially um, but the you know we are pretty much at extremes right now and of course you know I've shown you before the linear regression uh, for crude um, <clears throat> You know, it's margin of safety on a one-year basis. It's got a really decent margin of safety and a very high ATR to price ratio that's peaking. Uh, here is the uh, five-year uh, uh, linear regression, two standard devi devi deviations away. Again, doesn't mean that we can't go down. It just means it has a relatively decent um, margin of safety level. You can see back here in early 2015, 
if I were to do the same thing, so 01 slash 15 um, slash 2015, go back 10 years uh, before that uh, to 2005, so you can see what what the um, how far down we were at this point uh, on that 10-year basis, and you can see we were very similar. We were down below one standard deviation, just barely below, with a pretty decent amount of volume, um, and that set a short-term low point and we, we retested and then went lower but it set a short-term low uh, at that point and again we're very similar we've had an increase in volume a spike in the ATR uh, we're one standard deviations below very very similar to this but just obviously to a much higher level than what we were here especially on an ATR basis on a weekly level um, as a percentage again remember this is a percentage this isn't an absolute value because we obviously have smaller numbers here than we do there but as a percentage we have a really really high level and you can see the same thing on the bandwidth the Bollinger bandwidth it's really really high uh, Bollinger bandwidth right now I mean, look how high it is it's starting to slow down a little bit because we're not dropping as fast anymore uh, the lower bands actually coming up a little bit um, but you go back to that 2014 time frame right there and when things were you know the one of the worst levels you've seen that's as far so it kind of shows you just how extreme this move has been on crude on a percentage basis. This goes back to 2008. Um, it was at 60. The eight, we got the 60 on crude um, before we, you know, retested those lows. Um, here we are at 100 on the Bollinger bandwidth. So very, very, very wide bandwidth, and generally bandwidths. And you can see when they at these really high levels, they slow down. Right, so even if we go down, we slow down. Um, we, the bandwidth really start, starts to drop, drop off. So um, the lower band starts going down a lot slower than the upper band does. We stay in the lower half of the bandwidth most of that time. We stayed, you know, brief little periods here. We got in the upper half, but most of this time, you can see you stayed in the lower half of the bandwidth. Same thing in 2014. You stay with brief little pops up. For the most part, especially over here, you stayed in the lower half of the bandwidth. And as of right now, you know, we had a brief little pop up here. But for the most part, we're going to be in the lower half of the bandwidth. But we just have decent margin of safety. So as long as it doesn't go through the floor, and, and you know, according to this, it looks like we've already gone through the floor. So it doesn't have to rally uh, for stocks to rally. It just can't have this type of move from here. And it's hard to have that type of move. When you've already been so extreme to get to this point um, on crude, same thing. You can almost say the same thing with uh, bond yields, uh, for that matter as well. Look at look at that ADX again for some comparison on how high that ADX has been. We've had some ADX levels pretty high. This was just back in 2018, and then there's your 2014 level of how high. But you know you can see the negative index. Is a lot higher now than it ever was either of those two periods. So it just shows again how extreme this move is. In fact, the ADX right now, after coming down, is as high as it ever got there, and the and just a little bit higher there. Uh, and you go out to 2008, 2009, uh, which would be right there in this period. Um, here's where we're at. They, the ADX never got this high, and and the negative index never got. So this. The very, very extreme move, needless to say, which again lowers the probability of another extreme, very, very extreme move from today going forward. And that's what need that's what we need to avoid for stocks to avoid falling in suit, right? So it doesn't have to bounce. Crude oil doesn't have to bounce for stocks to bounce, but it just can't have this type of move from today going forward as stocks try to get going again. And so that's the nice thing. Crude oil rolls down a little bit more. Yeah, stocks might retest their lows, but as long as it doesn't fall through the floor like it already has done um, up to this point, which has helped stocks drop 35% in four weeks, then we have a good chance that stocks won't fall through the floor themselves as we retest these lows again, Sim you know, like 1929, that this will end up being more like 1987, where we've, we've set the floor um, in terms of risk appetite we might retest it or two with a little bit lower low, but we've set the floor now, and now it's just a matter of building the, the base that we can bounce off of um, and build this kind of long-term move to come out of it. From a sector standpoint, to, you know, to kind of see how the sectors have been performing today is a little interesting, not just today, but actually since 
uh, we started this low point. So if I were to go uh, from Tuesday, last Tuesday's open, since we started this rally, we gapped up on Tuesday, right? A little bit of a rally late Monday, but really it's that Tuesday open uh, that we started started to really rally up. You can see crude oil or energy stocks led a lot of that, industrials, financials, utilities, and real estate are still the biggest winners um, during this rally. Again, that's not a bullish rally. This is not, I mean, yes, industrials and financials and energy, they were the biggest losers. They're now the biggest winners. That's not surprising. Utilities and real estate are not like risk on um, sectors, right? These are interest rate sensitive sectors and the fact that interest rates are still really low uh, makes these very attractive. So until we see a good move higher in real in interest rates, significant move higher, then they'll still have some value, um, so at least some attractiveness um, uh, for people to want to get into them for their yield relative to where the bonds are at this moment. And then you have healthcare materials, you have your cyclical areas along with staples and your consumer areas still all lagging behind. So again, this is not rocket science, right? This is not the most bullish rallies. It's an oversold, it's a technical oversold rally. The question is, when will it end? Um, a lot of people expect it to end right now, or at least last Thursday, um, and rolling over yesterday, yesterday as it, or Friday as it did, and then more roll over today that we didn't get. So now, you know, they're expecting this short-term drop because of this rotation. It might happen tomorrow. Um, there's a good chance it might, you know, we might sucker in some more people into thinking this is more bullish than it is before we roll over. But this chart should be a pretty good indication that, that yes, we are gonna retest the lows no matter what we look at like the next day or two. Uh, if, if we do retest, high probability. That's what's, you know, in the next couple of days, that's the high probability move. That's the most likely move. We have plenty of bearish trade to take advantage of that. Um, <clears throat> but if we don't, if we rally up a couple more days, don't get suckered in. Right, and we have some bullish deltas in our port, in our active trading in our class portfolios too, so that won't be a problem either. But don't be suckered in, and use those next couple of days, assuming this chart looks like it does, to add on the more bearish trades um, to be able to take advantage of if and when we do um, pull back down towards those, at least towards those lows. All right, so that brings us to our trade of the day. Uh, it's actually in this technology area here. Here, let's pull up um, our charts. And again, we've already placed this trade um, in our in our live trading session on AMD here. And let's actually take a look at it on the chart first, and we'll take a look at the trade. So AMD is giving us the uh, a really juicy bearish signal, um, light green shading in the yellow line. Uh, when you bend this bearish and you pop back up to uh, from from being way oversold to the moving average, a lot of times we end up with red lines and dark green, dark pink shading again. Now we can roll over, um, but usually we've been kind of flattened for a while before that happens. Uh, so this has a potential, and of course nothing's ever 100%, but has a potential of being a really uh, bearish pattern here. Of course, it's the same thing uh, with the three green arrow chart here. Uh, when we're on bullish trends, the same thing as you know when you look at three green arrow or three red arrows as being a really bullish sign. So I know like back in the day when I taught at Invest Tools, we always taught three green arrows as being a buy signal. And three green arrows is a buy signal, especially when you're when you're starting a bullish move, right? When you've been like this, and three green arrows can be a buy signal, uh, depending upon how we're rolling over. Uh, but more often than not, the best buy signal. Um, the best buy signal is three red arrows because either we bounce off of that with a really good move or we don't. And so we can keep our risk really small if we don't and have a really good reward to risk ratio if we do. Uh, with three green arrows being a little late, you can see from this point, the three red arrows, where we close at 47 to here, when you close at 52 and a quarter, you've given up some gains. And so you don't have the same reward to risk ratio, which is fine for a trend trade, not so fine for a swing trade, for a short term trade. Uh, so the flip side of that then is three green arrows, right? Do we wait for the new set of three red arrows, which would mean, you know, that MACD has got to come all the way back down to below zero, the stochastic has got to roll over, that will probably be easier. Um, and then of course the moving average will be really easy too. Uh, but the MACD will be the long, the one that takes a longer time to get the three red arrows. So you know, either either we we bounce down from this or we blow through the top. So the question is, how likely is are we to blow through the top here? Well, you know, looking at like the Bollinger Bands, you can see there's a pretty decent resistance here. So for us to blow through the top, and we are in the upper half of the bandwidth, uh, at least the last week, 
if we blow through the top here, it's a pretty good chance the market itself is blowing through it's you know through through that 30 day moving average and maybe making a run to the 200. Is that you know is that likely? Well, it's it's not zero percent, but it's probably a low probability. So if the market itself is going to retest those lows, uh, if there's a good chance of that, then there's a good chance of this also using that resistance and rolling over and filling in some pretty decent gaps. And you can see even the one little bit of support you have in this area. Um, it's a very fine line. It's a very. It's going to be easier to break through that support than it is that resistance. They're about the same in length, but the skinniness is different. So that means really, until you get down to around 33, we can, you know, if we drop, we can drop pretty hard and pretty fast on a stock like this. Whatever the catalyst is for it to pull back, uh, even if it's the broader market causing you know all all ships to you know go up or down, you know, with the tide, so to speak. Um, so that's kind of the idea. The other thing too, very similar to Oracle, uh, is that DMI. That you know we did get a positive crossover here on the DMI, but just like Oracle, it occurred below 20. That's not very convincing of a bullish crossover. If it was up higher, you'd feel better, but it's a lot lower, which means it's going to be really hard for that bullish line to get going. It's got to get above 25 before I feel really good about it. Um, it's going to be really easy for the negative one to get above 25. So. So that's kind of the idea is, is, you know, it's a very not so bullish crossover, bullish crossover. So let's take advantage of that and sell um, and sell what we did. We sold the 39. So if you were to come over here, let's pull up AMD um, and look at the May expiration. Again, there's earnings com potentially coming up, depending upon if they delay or not. There's some earnings coming up here. Uh, and this was at a 20 delta when I first looked at it, the 38. Uh, so, so you have a, you sell the 38, you buy the 42. Uh, that gives us, and we went with a, um, we went with a, um, a half a normal position because of that potential earnings in there. We went, and plus it's pretty speculative, right? I mean, it, either we bounce, we break out to the upside, or we really drop to the downside. So if we break out, I want to be able to manage my losses with a, you know, with a, in this case. If I can get out a half of that, which is what we'll try to do, then that would that would be a really small position compared to my normal risk. Um, but my reward for that risk for 250 bucks or about, you know, what's 307, 270 dollars of 280, 290, 290 dollars of risk, uh, which would be 50 percent to get 1800 dollars of reward potentially. That's a pretty decent reward to risk ratio if that really juicy bearish technical pattern plays out. That's the type of pattern we did Friday. It's the type of pattern we do today. And if we go up the next day or two, we'll have even more of those types of patterns to trade uh, over the next couple of days uh, to take advantage of and be much, much better prepared for the retest than uh, previously. All right, well, that wraps us up for today. Uh, now you've heard from me, I want to hear from you. Use that link popping out in the top right corner of your screen. That takes you to our Market Outlook forums, one of the things you get for free. Uh, the rest of the community with our trading rooms is part of our premium subscription. Um, so the, not the monthly subscription, but the premium one. Um, but the Market Outlook forum is for our free subscribers. So use that link. Let's go there. Open up any new thread, any questions or comments you have about the video, and let's interact with the community, with our Market Scholars community here, and keep this conversation going between the videos. Again, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that thumbs up icon. Comment on our video down below. Uh, follow me on Twitter for more content between the videos from day to day. And join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. Um, as always, thank you very, very much for, for watching our video tonight. Have a great rest of your evening, and we'll see you all next time.